Hello and welcome and today the topic of discussion is normalization of data and we are going to discuss question to identify normal forms. So prior to this we have discussed everything about normalization that is first normal form, second normal form, question on second normal form, third normal form, question on third normal form, BCNF, question on BCNF and after studying all those we are now going to understand those questions which are generally asked in various competitions like UGC, NET, GATE and other organizations where uh, the question is comes like that you have to identify that given question is in which normal form so let's start with the question and before proceeding for the question let me see let me tell you one diagram very clearly so here we have one diagram which shows that uh, that bcnf 3nf 2nf 1nf that is if if 1nf is representing asia 2nf is representing india 3NF is representing Delhi and BCNF is representing Red Fort Delhi. So if I'm in Red Fort Delhi, this means that I'm in Delhi. This means I'm in India. This means I'm in Asia. That is if a table is in BCNF. That is if a table is in BCNF, then 100% is it is it 3NF, it's in 2NF and it's in 1NF. But if suppose the dot is here, if I'm in Delhi, then 100% I'm in India, 100% I'm in Asia, but it doesn't mean that I'm in Red Fort. I'm in Delhi, but it doesn't mean that I'm in Red Fort. So what is that? If I am in 3NF, that is if table is in 3NF, then 100% it is in 2NF, it is in 1NF, but it doesn't mean that it's in BCNF. Fine. Okay, that is if a table is in higher form, then 100% it is in lower form. So this you have to keep in mind before studying uh, the question, before solving the question. Let's start with the question. Okay, now you have a question that is, the question is that given a table having following uh, attributes with functional dependencies, determine the given R is in which normal form. That is, you have to determine the given R is in which normal form. So now you must be knowing everything. So let's start with second normal form. What was second normal form? Second normal form says that no non-prime attribute should be partially dependent on key of a table. That is, if a key of a table is AB and AB is determining a non-prime attribute C, then C should be fully dependent on AB. You cannot write like this, A determines C or B determines C. That is, C should be, non-prime attribute should be fully dependent. That is, key should not break. Key should not break. Fine. So, this is not in 2NF. Fine. So, this was 2NF. This was 2NF. That is, I, I should write what is the definition. That is, no non-prime attribute should be be partially should be partially dependent on on key of a table on key of table so this was uh, 2nf that is if ab to c then a to x is not possible and a to y or b to y is not possible that is key should not break that is no non-prime attribute should partially dependent on key. Fine. It should fully dependent on key. Okay. Then comes 3NF. Then what is 3NF? If a non-trivial functional dependency A to X to A exists. If non-trivial functional dependency X to A exists, then either X is a super key or A is a prime attribute or. Fine. So this was 3NF. Then comes BCNF. That is, if x to a is a non-trivial functional dependency, then x should be a super key. This was BCNF. Fine. Okay. So, this was BCNF. So, this, uh, you have to keep these definition in mind. Only then you will be able to solve the problem. So, let's start. And as I have told you already that in order to solve the question, you need to identify candidate key of a table. So you have given a functional dependency and you have given a table. And I told you many times, kindly watch my video on how to calculate candidate key shortcut method, then you will understand how we are calculating. So using this functional dependency, let's make the arrow diagram. PQ to R. PQ to R. Fine. Then QS to TU. QS. Q S to T U fine okay then P S to V W P S 
to v w v and w and then p to x then p to x then p to x okay fine so how we find the candidate key let me rub all these things how we find the candidate key How we find the candidate key? We, you need to identify those attributes which are not identified by any of the functional dependency. That is who, which do not have any arrow pointing towards it. P, P is not having arrow. So P will be there. Q is not having any arrow. Q will be there. S is not having any arrow. S will be there. So till now I don't know what will be my candidate key. But my candidate key will have these attribute. So let's find the closure of PQS. So closure of PQS will have PQS. Now with the help of PQ I can write R. So with the help of PQ I can write R. With the help of QS I can write TU. I have QS. Yes I have QS. I can write TU. With the help of PS I can write VW. With the help of P and S I can write V and W. With the help of P I can write X. With the help of P I can write X. So with the help of PQS you are determining all the attribute of a table. Therefore PQS is a candidate key. Therefore, PQS is a candidate key and only PQS will be the candidate key because anything beyond PQS, that is if we increase attribute of PQS, then that will become a super key, not candidate key. So finally, we have PQS as prime attribute because these attributes are part of key. So these are prime attribute and RTUVWX are non-prime attribute, non-prime attribute. Fine. Okay. So let's start. Let's start with, let's start to check whether the given table is in which normal form. So first we check BCNF. Always remember, first we check BCNF. If our table is in BCNF, then no need to check the entire table is in uh, all the normal form. Then if table is not in BCNF, we check 3NF. If table is in 3NF, then no need to check for 2NF. Then no need to check for 2NF. Okay, fine. And if table is in, not in 2NF, 3NF, then we check 2NF. And finally, we check 1NF. So let's start for BCNF. Okay, let's start for BCNF. First, what is the definition of BCNF? Then if X to A is a non-trivial functional dependency, then X should be a super key. Then if this is the functional dependency, then this should be a super key. Is PQ a super key? No. PQS is a super key because our candidate key is PQS and candidate key is a super key. So this is not following BCNF. This is not following BCNF. If one of the functional dependency out of N functional dependency, if anyone is not following the condition of BCNF, then the table is not in BCNF. So table is not in BCNF. So if this is not in BCNF, let's check for 3NF. What is 3NF? Either this should be a super key or this should be a prime attribute. So is PQ super key? No. PQS is a super key. Is R is a prime attribute? No. R is a part of non-prime attribute. So this is not in 3NF. If any of the functional dependency is not in 3NF, the entire table is not in a 3NF. Fine. Okay. So the table is not in 3NF. So let's check 2NF. What is 2NF? 2NF says key should not be broken. That is if PQS is determining anything, then neither PQ nor P nor Q determine anything. Okay. So let's see the functional demand. PQ is determining R. What is the definition? That no non-prime attribute should be partially dependent on key. And R is a non-prime attribute. Fine. And it is partially depending on key. What is key? PQS. But it is depending on part of a key. So this is not in 2NF also. The table is not in 2NF. So finally the table is in 1NF. Fine. So our answer is 1NF. Fine. So yes, we have all found that our table is in 1NF. Let's start with the another question. Second question. And so the second question is again almost same. The you have given a question, you have given a table, you have given a functional dependency, and you have to determine that given table is in which normal form. So let's find the candidate key first using arrow diagram. P Q to R, P Q to R. Fine. Then P to S T. Then P to S and T. Then Q to U. Then Q to U. Fine. Then U to V W, then U to V N W. Fine. Then your job is to find out those attributes which are not determined by any other functional dependency or those attributes which do not have arrow pointing towards them. P don't have any arrow. Q don't have any arrow. R has arrow. S has arrow. P 
P has arrow, U has arrow. We so apart from PQ, all the attribute are having arrow pointing toward them. So I don't know what will be my candidate key, but my candidate key will have PQ. So let's find the closure of PQ. So PQ will have PQ. Now with the help of this functional dependency PQ, I can write R. So with the help of PQ, I can write R. With the help of P, I can write ST. Do I have P? Yes, I can write ST. With the help of Q, I can write U. Do I have Q? Yes, I can write U. With the help of U, I can write VW. Yes, I have U. I can write VW. So with the help of PQ, I am determining all the attribute of a table. So this PQ is what candidate key and only PQ will be the candidate key because I just told you, I don't know what will be the key, but key will have PQ as a candidate as an integral part. So if I increase PQ, suppose I'm increasing PQR, I'm increasing PQS, then that will become super key, not candidate key. Kindly watch definition of candidate key. So this table has only one candidate key that is PQ. Now check the definition. Now see, now see this functional dependency and start from what BCNF because I told you first check for BCNF, then for 3NF, if not then 2NF and then finally it will be in 1NF. Okay, so what is BCNF? BCNF says if x to a is a non-trivial functional dependency, then x should be a super key or candidate key. Then PQ to R. Is PQ super key? Yes. Now PQ is a super key. So this functional dependency is in BCNF. So it doesn't mean that all the functional dependencies are in BCNF. You have to check entire functional dependency. So let's start with this functional dependency. So let's start with this functional dependency. Is this functional dependency is in BCNF? This should be a super key. Is this a super key? No, our super key is PQ. So because of this functional dependency, this table is not in BCNF. This functional dependency is not in BCNF. So this table is not in BCNF. So let's check 3NF. Let's check 3NF. I'll not check this functional dependency again because this functional dependency is already in higher normal form. Let's check this functional dependency. So what is 3NF? 3NF says if x to a is a non-trivial functional dependency, then either x should be a super key or a should be a prime attribute. So if I talk about prime attribute, PQ is a prime attribute, P and Q are prime attribute, and these are non-prime attribute because the part of the attribute which are part of key are prime attribute and the attribute which are not part of key are non-prime attribute. Then let's check for 3NF. Is this a prime uh, super key? No, P is not a super key because PQ is a super key. Is ST a prime attribute? No, ST is a non-prime attribute. So this is not in 3NF also. So if any of the functional dependency is not in 3NF, the entire table is not in 3NF. So this is not in 3NF also. Fine. Let's check this functional dependency for 2NF. So for 2NF, what is the definition of 2NF? 2NF says no non-prime attribute should be partially dependent on key of a table. That is if AB is a key and it is determining a non-prime attribute C, then A alone should not determine anything. B alone should not determine anything. So here st a non prime attribute is dependent on only p whereas our complete key is pq so it is depending on part of a key so this is partial dependency so if this is a partial dependency that the table is not in 2nf also so the table is not in 2nf so finally what we are left with we are left with only d option the correct option is d the table is in 1nf so finally we have found that the given table having following attribute p q r s t u v and w with the following functional dependency is in first normal forms let's check the answer yes the answer is correct the table is in one normal form